Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today's recipe, we're making beef barbacoa tacos. Now I love this recipe because it is so versatile. Now we're gonna be cooking it up in our Instant Pot and once you do that, you've got the makings for lots of different meals. You can make tacos like we're gonna do today, where you can make enchiladas, burritos, nachos, and even use this for meal prep. Maybe you like to you know, cook your food up ahead of time during the week and portion it out. This freezes well, so it you know, goes right in the freezer, and I think you're gonna love the flavors. I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to make it right after this. All right, so let's start by going over our barbacoa ingredients. So first up is our beef. I'm using a chuck roast here. It's a more inexpensive cut of beef. Works well because we're cooking it under pressure or if you wanna do it in a slow cooker, you can. And as long as you cook it slow and low, it'll be so nice and tender, you'll love it. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna slice this and trim some of the excess fat off and we're gonna sear it. And I'm gonna sear it in a stainless steel pan. You could use the Instant Pot, it has that feature, but I like a little more room, and I really wanna emphasize that you use a stainless steel pan because then that way the meat actually sticks, creates what's called a fond on the bottom of the pan, and that's where you get a lot of flavor. All right, so we're gonna cook our onions in that later, we're gonna lift that off, and then we're gonna put it in our Instant Pot, and the flavors are just so delicious. Next up, we have some, I have some finely diced onions, garlic, I have some fresh garlic here. I have some chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, some dried oregano, some ground coriander, ancho chili powder, and some ground cumin. I have some ground cloves, some bay leaves. We're gonna use some fresh lime juice, some apple cider vinegar, salt, and some chicken broth. So before we start searing our meat, I got it here on the board. I'm going to cut some of the pieces a little smaller, but I am going to salt them up a little bit. So I'm going to put a little bit of salt on here before we sear them. But a piece this size, I'm going to just cut it in half. It'll just be easier to, to work with and it'll fit better in the pan. And you want your meat to be at room temperature before you start cooking it. So here's our setup. I got my stainless steel pan over medium high heat. I want this to be nice and hot to sear that meat. And I have my instant pot uh, insert behind there ready to go for when the meat's done. I'll just transfer it right into that. And I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to my pan here, just a little bit. You can see the swirls in the oil, which means it's, it's pretty hot. So we're gonna place the meat in there. We're gonna let that sear for you know a couple of two, three minutes or so. If you have a splatter guard, it's a great time to use it. I love these things, they work great. They don't keep all the, the splatter out or in, I should say, but they help tremendously. Alright, we're a couple of minutes into this. You see it's nice and seared right there. Let's flip them over and we'll do the same thing on the second side. A couple more minutes have passed. We've got a nice sear going on. I'm going to place this into the Instant Pot right behind here. I'm going to add just a touch more oil because it's kind of disappeared there. Give it a swirl. And add our last three pieces. And once these are done, They'll go into the Instant Pot and we'll show you the next step. Our second batch is done. Pop those right in the Instant Pot. Now I'm going to turn my heat down because it's pretty hot. We're going to add some oil here. And we're going to add our onions. Take a wooden spoon and we're going to start scraping the bottom. And we're going to saute these for about five minutes. And this is what I was telling you about. You want to pick up all that brown stuff on the bottom, get it into your onions, and then we're going to put that in our Instant Pot for more flavor. All right, so we're going to place all of our onions right into our Instant Pot. Now that we've got our meat and onions in the Instant Pot, now we're going to put a few things in the blender. But first I'm going to mince my garlic. Just put it in a press and just mince it. Have it ready to go. So in the blender, we're going to put our chicken broth. 
I'm just gonna put a cup of that in there. And remember guys, you can get the written instructions, all the ingredients and everything down below in the description of this video. Click down there if you're on a computer that says show more and you'll find it. Okay, we'll put the lime juice in here. And this is just gonna combine all these spices and really get them mixed up before we add it. There's our apple cider vinegar and all of our spices. I've got, you know, the, the ground cumin, the cloves, the coriander, the ancho chili pepper, the salt, everything, oregano, and we'll just slide those right in. Now, before I add the chipotle chili peppers, I like to take the seeds out. If you're a hot and spicy kind of guy or gal, leave it in. If you like that heat or like me, I take them out. It just lowers the temperature a little bit, but you still get all the flavor. So this is how I'm gonna do it. Now be careful, these are hot and spicy, don't touch your face. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut into this pepper and expose the seeds. Can you see that? Tons of seeds in here, tons of heat, let me tell you. So I just open them up and I scrape out. You don't have to scrape them all out, you can scrape out as many as you want. And I'm gonna put about four of these peppers into my sauce. And then I just take this part and place it in the blender. And we're also gonna add a couple of teaspoons of the adobo sauce to the blender as well. Then we're gonna pour this beautiful sauce, check this out, right over the top of all that nice beef. Now, since we've got a lot of stuff left in there, I wanna get it all out. So I'm gonna add a little more about another cup's worth of chicken broth so that I can kind of release it and get all those good spices in there. All we have left to add is that garlic that I minced up and those bay leaves. I'm gonna try and just stir that just a little bit, kind of work it in. Now we're gonna cook this somewhere around an hour. We'll see. I just want that meat to be nice and tender. So I have a, a meat selection here, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that, and I'm gonna cook it for, um, you know, I'll, I'll check it at 50 minutes and we'll see where we're at. Before we put our tacos together, I have a chef joke for you. Why can't you trust tacos? because they tend to spill the beans. <laughs> so here's the barbacoa after 50 minutes of cooking. I'm gonna show you how tender it is. I just pick it up with this pair of tongs here and you can just see, I can just squeeze it apart. So it is ready, nice and tender, ready to go for some nice shredding. So there's a couple of ways that you can shred this up. You can either do it in the pot, which is what I'm gonna do because it's so tender, or you can take it out, put it on a cutting board and then shred it. But I'm just gonna take you know, a couple forks here and just pull it apart. It's just falling apart. And then uh, we can take out the bay leaves when you see them. And this shredded up beautifully. You wanna come in here? Yes. Do you? Oh. Yes, hello, hello. <laughs> All right, look at our setup here. That's what I wanted to tell everybody. This is our setup. I got my barbacoa over here. We've got our shredded cheese, some sliced avocados, some cabbage. I have a little bit of pico and I made up some fresh uh, rice here and some sour cream over there too. So I got it all laid out. We're ready to eat. Ooh, I'm hungry. Yeah, I know you are, but you'll have a burrito, I'm sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but I got to do my taco first because that's what this video is about. All right, we are ready to make our tacos. Now, what I've done here is I have a tortilla warmer. I love these things, they're great. I've talked about them many times. I'm um, taking some corn tortillas. You can use flour, whatever you like. And I'm gonna put them into my little tortilla warmer, pop it in the microwave for about 35, 40 seconds, not minutes, seconds. And these will stay hot for like a half an hour. So it's great if you're serving, you know, having a party. You can put them in there, a whole stack, and keep them warm and people can just help themselves. Okay, my tortillas are super hot. All right, we got that. I'm gonna place it in my little taco holder here. Whew. Okay, of course we need our barbacoa. And then my Spanish rice that I cooked up. A little bit of cabbage for some crunch. Here comes some pico. 
and some avocado. And we'll finish it off with some cheddar cheese. You gotta love the colors. Oh, and I got my sour cream. Can't forget that. Barbacoa tacos, these things are delicious. I get to try it now. Oh, tacos are messy, but that's okay. These tacos, that barbacoa is perfectly seasoned. It's got a hint of heat to it, just like I like it, and tons of flavor. You're gonna love this. You've got the crunch from the uh, cabbage, like I said, and the pico gives it a little freshness. Delicious, guys. So you know what you need now? You need to make my Spanish rice to go with this barbacoa. It is super delicious, all right? I'm gonna leave a link for you right over here. Click that, go make that rice, serve it up with this barbacoa, you'll be in heaven. The flavors are so delicious. All right, and also, if you'd like to see all of my Mexican recipes, because that's where this channel started, really, was making my Mexican recipes, I'm gonna leave a playlist for you right down here. It's gonna show you all of my Mexican recipes, so check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, smash that like button, and leave me a comment. All right, we'll see you next time.